In this video, I'm going to show you how to finish off the colour mixer application. If you've come this far, you'll find it relatively easy. Notice I've got some additional text boxes on the form. I've also got some labels within the circles. When I change the amount of red, notice that the text boxes are updating. I've got the binary equivalent of the red value and I've got the hexadecimal equivalent of the red value. Notice also that some of the labels on the form are also updating. Same with green and same with blue. Let's see how it's done. These are the extra text boxes. Text box 4, as you can see in the properties window, text box 5 and text box 6. Those are the three binary values. And then I've got text box 7, 8 and 9, which are holding the hexadecimal equivalents. These are just labels. Label 4 is where the three colours overlap. Label 8 is blue only, 9 is red only, and 10 is green only. Label 6 is where green and blue overlap. Label 5 is where red and blue overlap. And then 7 is where red and green overlap. I've set the contents of the text boxes and the labels to begin with using the form load event. It's very straightforward. Text box 4 is the binary equivalent of the red value and all I've done is use a built-in function, dec to bin. This will convert a decimal value into binary. It takes two parameters, the value itself and then the number of binary digits you want. I've done the same thing with the green value and the blue value. Displaying the hexadecimal equivalents of the red, green and blue values is just as simple. I've used the built-in dec to hex function, which takes only one parameter. To set the initial values of the labels, I've used the dec to hex function again. Remember, label 8 is just the colour code for the amount of blue, with no red and no green. So I've used dec to hex to get the hexadecimal equivalent of the blue value. And in front of that, I've concatenated 00, zero for the amount of red and 00, zero for the amount of green. Together, these make up the initial colour code for the blue only part of that top circle. Label 9 is where we have red only. So I've got the hexadecimal equivalent of the red value. And after that, I've concatenated a pair of zeros for the amount of green and a pair of zeros for the amount of blue. And I've done something similar for green, of course. I've concatenated a pair of zeros in front of it and a pair of zeros to the end of it. Label 5 is where the red and the blue circles overlap. There's no green involved. So I've got the hexadecimal equivalent of the red value followed by a pair of zeros followed by the hexadecimal equivalent of the blue value. Label 6 is where green and blue overlap, so you can see I've done something similar. I've got the amount of green, the amount of blue, and then a pair of zeros. And finally, label 7 is where red and green overlap. That's the appearance of the form taken care of for when it first loads. And of course the appearance needs to change when the user adjusts the amount of red, green and blue using the scroll bars. Well, I've used exactly the same code. I've literally copy and pasted this code from the form's load event into the scroll event for the red scroll bar. This code only runs for the red scroll bar, so we've only needed to update text box 4 and text box 7, but I've done it in the same way as I did in the form load event. For the green scroll bar, Again, this block of code is identical, but this time I'm only updating text box 5 and text box 8. And there's the equivalent code for the blue scroll bar. That's it. That's the colour mixer application finished. Perhaps you can think of a way to make it even more useful. 